shadow that has ever overcome your light and there is no rival that could ever stand against your mind you've always been with us every battle you've already won we've already won there is no way Disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off this fear as I sing out your name. A victory dance I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off this fear as I sing out your name. A victory dance I will dance out.
out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment.
from the mountain and Jesus in the street. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. within your presence I speak Jesus come on now speak that name that name that's above every other do you believe that there's power speak the name of Jesus over every situation ah Jesus why don't you say it with me? Jesus. Come on, we can do better than that. Jesus. Oh, what a powerful presence of the Lord that we feel. We're going to speak the name of Jesus over these needs. There's a shift here in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray for Sister Cornwell, Sister Michelle Bassell, Brother Alex Connors, Mark Brown, Jimmy Parker, Sister Melissa Walker, Kaylin Walker, Linda Brown, Tyler Brown, uh, Brother Brandon Connors, and Emil Winkler. These are just a few of the names that we are bringing in need, some on the list here. And if you have a need, please come. Let us pray over you. Let us lay hands on you and pray for you in that one powerful name, the name of Jesus. Lord, we plead your blood. Come on. Come and pray. Lord, we thank you. We're claiming victory today, Lord. In your powerful name, Lord, heal your body. Heal your people. Touch these needs, Lord. Let's pray.
How many's ever found that when you prayed through initially, when you prayed through, man, you rode a high for a while. Everything just seemed to be just so great and almost, almost to the point of perfection. Everything just seemed to click. But then after a while, life, trouble, people, circumstances, and you find it's almost like that old song, there's a hole in my bucket. I'll tell you where to, where, how to remedy that. Go back to the altar. Not just a ge geographical location, but the altar that you knelt at, whether it was in your bedroom or whether it was in your car or whether it was at the church, the location's not important. What matters is get your heart back in line with the altar and go back and pray as you did before. Let the fire on my altar never go out. The fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Come on, sing it, can you? Lord, renew me. Lord, restore me. Lord, stir up the coals. Come on, sing it. all over this congregation today. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me explain that day and night, night and day business. It's impossible because of the flesh. It's impossible for us to walk around every day, 24-7, with our spirit up, with everything going right. And if, if you figured out how to do that, let me come let me know, all right? But if you're human like me, <clears throat> you have days where your old body just don't cooperate. Then you got days that your old mind don't cooperate. Then you got days your old spirit don't cooperate. You ever wake up mad? You don't know why you're mad. You're just mad. Mad at everything. Mad at everybody. Mad at the world. Mad at the dog. Mad at the cat. Mad at the wife. Oh, y'all don't, don't deal. Okay, well, I'm glad. 
I'm glad you don't ha have those issues. Mm -hmm. Just me. Just me. Here I am, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> it's there. And, and, it, and it, whatever it come from, I don't know. I, I wish to go back where it come from, but I don't, I don't know what spawns it. But what the, what the process behind this day and night, night and day is, even when things are high or even when things are low, you've got to learn to be consistent through it all. Your, your, old, your old spirit may be ornery. Your mind may be out of whack. But there can be a peace in your soul that says, I'm a child of God, and I will not quit today. I will not throw in the towel today. I will not backslide today. Now, on those days, it may be important to pray a little harder or pray, you know, pull in a little extra prayer. Lord, let an angel be at my lips and an angel be at my eyes and an angel be at my ears. Maybe an angel at my feet so I don't go kick somebody. Whatever the case may be, nothing wrong with that. that. That's doing nothing more than what that old, what that lady did in the Bible. Not old lady, but that lady did in the Bible when she said, I believe, or maybe it was a guy, whatever. I believe, it was one or the other, I can promise you. But help thou my unbelief. I'm admitting I'm human. I just need a little extra help right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. Day and night, night and day. Day and night, night and day. Don't let the fire on my altar ever go out. Don't let the fire go out. God, it's a fire you started. Ooh. Come on, he may have started it, but you got to keep it kindled. Ooh. I think we ought to pray one more time. Praise team, sing that one more time, day and night. Night and day, day and night. Come on, pray, church. Somebody call on the name of the Lord right now. The Holy Ghost is trying to talk to you. Night, night and day. The Lord's trying to touch you. Night, night and day. Put another log on the fire. Night, night and day. Rekindle that. Stir up the coals a little bit. Looking at some of y'all, like you don't want to admit you're human. So I guess that's just me, you know, getting all been out of shape just over whatever. Waking up on the wrong side of the bed. Mm-hmm. Oh, not me, not me. Like that old boy went to the therapist and he said, well, do you wake up grouchy? He said, no, I let her sleep. Or the, Nathan just got it. Or the other fella is laying in bed and he's praying. He said, Lord, I hadn't cussed anybody out. I hadn't lost my temper. I hadn't kicked the cat. But I'm about to get out of bed and I really need for you to help me today. I feel like the Lord is saying, it's okay to be human. Let me help you with your humanity. Don't be intimidated because you hadn't got it all together. 
Because I tell you, about the time we get it all together, we're going to forget where we put it. It is the truth. Why don't you take a break? I was talking to somebody this week. They were just wearing themselves out over something. I mean, you can be seated. Just wearing themselves out. I mean, hard on themselves. I'm, on, I'm not going to embarrass them, but I'm going to, I'm going to use their name because that's part of the punch of what I'm trying to say. And I said, hey, would you do me a favor? And they looked at me and I said, would you do me a favor? And they're like, yeah. I said, would you give Dan Fisher a break? I was talking to Dan. Would you give Dan Fisher a break? And he kind of looked at me. I said, because he ain't as bad a guy as you're making him out to be. Can you put your name in that same spot? Would you give Lydia a break? Would you give Brendan a break? Would you give Pastor a break? Would you give me a break? Would you give Floyd a break? Because you're not as bad as you think you are. Now, sometimes we're not as good as we think we are either. All right? We got to stay balanced. But the Lord loves you just like you are. And he loves you enough not to leave you like you are. He wants to help you get better. But the only way you can get better is leave the past behind. Let it go and reach for the mark, toward the mark. With that, let's get into the word of the Lord today. I'm excited to be back in the pulpit finally. Three of you are. Thank you. Joshua chapter 4. <laughs> Joshua chapter 4. So good to have everybody here. I'm going to miss somebody and I'm going to get in trouble, but it's good to have Donnie and Rose with us today. God bless them. Glad they're here. It's good to see Floyd again. Uh, love him. Glad he's here today. Good to see Brother Damon here today. Good to see Blake and Chris. So thankful for, for them being here. And it is good to have Sister Bonnie home. She said she wanted to slip in and hide. Well, you got that Wednesday night, but you didn't get that tonight. All right. And it's good to have um, Sister Teresa and Evan home too. Yeah. Missed them when they were gone. Amen. But it's also good to have Tim and Melissa here today. Yeah. This is Gracie's mom and stepdad. We're glad they're here. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. And all the time. I need y'all to help me pray about something. Jump on it, Big Daddy. Come on. Leave the plate of bacon behind for just a minute and help me pray. All right? We need a break in the rain. If we can dodge the rain... They're going to try again Wednesday, right, Brother, Brother Mark, Wednesday? We're going to try again Wednesday to pour the piers out here for our new building. That means whether it's, whether it's a pier or whether it's the little platform thing, whatever you all decided to do. I, I'm excited about us getting on down the road with this project, but the rain is hold, holding us up. Now, I know we need the rain. Come August, we're going to be squawking. Lord, we need some rain. Yeah, hold it till August. How about that? Well, maybe not till August because we, don't need, we need some in between now and then. We just need about a two-week break, maybe, maybe, maybe a, maybe a three-week break so we can get the foundation formed up and poured. Are you excited about that? So I'm kind of being comical, but I'm also being very serious. We need a break in that rain. So if you would, please help us pray. The Lord would be kind to us and hold off the rain. We need, we need that. Sister Fran, good to see you this morning. And it's good to have Sister Blanche back. She's been under the weather. Amen. Glad to have... Have our peeps home and back in church. Amen. 
Turn with me to the book of Joshua, chapter 4. Joshua, chapter 4. Amen. I'm going to read a few verses, and then we're going to get into the Word of the Lord. Now, I don't intend to be long because I don't know exactly how my voice is going to hold up doing this, so we're just going to, y'all guinea pigs today. We're going to do a trial run, all right? Joshua chapter 4, and it came to pass when all the people were clean past. I like that. I think he's from the, he's from the south. When all the people were clean past over Jordan. How's that, Sister Cindy? She told me I sound like Ernest T. this morning. So, when all the people were clean past Jordan. All right. That the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take ye hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall dwell this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man, and Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in, times to, in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial. Everybody say, a memorial yeah. unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded. Now, I'm not going to give you my title just yet, because while <clears throat> I'm going to break every preaching law, and rule right now because you're supposed to read your text and do an exegetical uh, sermon on what you read. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to use this to launch out, but instead of exegesis, I'm going to do eisegesis. And I'm going to go the opposite direction, and I think you'll understand when I'm done why we're doing it just exactly this way. But I feel like the Holy Ghost is in the house, and I want to encourage you today. Can you lift your hands and ask the Lord to talk to us? Lord, thank you. Thank you today for your visitation. And I, I, I trust that you still are in the house, and you have something to pour out upon those that are here today. I'm asking you, Lord, to let your spirit move in a mighty way in this place, and we will give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said amen. God bless you. High five your neighbor and you may be seated. Some of y'all don't know what a high five is, all right? God is good. And all the time. These stones, he said. I want you to go out into the river. And when the ark comes through and the waters part, I want you to find a stone. Now, it can't be too, too big that you can't carry it. But I don't want it to be some little pebble either. I want it to be something recognizable. I want it to be something that can be seen and understood. That this is a, is a monument of specified complexity. It's different. It didn't just happen by chance. It was created. Intelligent design was involved. It had a plan in mind. Now, how they put them together, I don't know. Maybe they piled them all up together. Maybe they put them in a circle. Maybe they built Stonehenge. Those were some fellas. All right? I don't know. It wasn't Stonehenge. Just, just, anyway. So, I don't know how they orchestrated it or how they put it together. But what I do know is that all 12 tribes were represented and they got a stone that would have been too big for them to carry in their hand. 
that they had to carry on their shoulder and they carried it out of the riverbed to a place where they're going to lodge. So I want you to think about that. They traveled all day long with that stone on their shoulder until they got wherever they was going to spend the night. And then Moses or Joshua was able to tell them, we're going to put them right here. Now here's, um, here's something kind of caught me today or this week. I was going through my Bible reading, and I don't remember now what spawned this little thought. But it dawned on me out of 12 tribes, you've got 13 groups. 12 tribes and the priests. That's why there's not a tribe of Joseph. Because he took Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, to make 12 because he pulled out the Levites. And the Levites became the priests, but they did not become a tribe, per se, of inheritance. They became servants of the tabernacle. And it dawned on me while I'm sitting there pondering this, 12 brothers had wives and children and all were commanded to intermarry. They married their cousins, people. That's a weird thing. But in all the things that the Lord has commanded, He told them, the one thing that you will not forget is me. I want them to be reminded when your kids come up and say, what are these stones here? I want you to be able to tell them the tale. I want you to be able to tell them the story of how I brought you out of Egypt. And I brought you through the wilderness. And then I turned you around and sent you back through the wilderness. And I promised you that I would take care of you. I want you to tell them about the manna. I want you to tell them about water from a rock. I want you to tell them about the quail. I want you to tell them all about all the things that I did to bring down the gods of Egypt and show that the God of Israel was superior. I want you to tell them the story of how your shoes for 40 years never wore out and your garment for 40 years never wore out. I want you to tell them the details about what I have done for you. So the stones represent something we should remember. The stones represent a message that should keep going forward. And in the same category, he tells us that we should not forget the things that he has done. David said it like this, if I can find the right verse here. That's not the right verse. All right. I've got Bibles open everywhere. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. There it is. He said, I will never forget thy precepts. For with them thou hast quickened me. Now I want to pause for just a moment and ask you, what is the thing that quickens us? Because when David starts talking about his law, he's talking about the Old Testament law. He's talking about the Mosaic Covenant. He's talking about the, the agreement that God made with the, the Aaronic priesthood and said, I will take care of you, I will lead you, I'll provide for you, I'll, all that. But he said, there's something about what you have said. There's something about what you have promised that has quickened me. The Bible says for the church that the Holy Ghost is a quickening spirit. You need to recognize that no matter matter what happens, we cannot stop preaching the Holy Ghost. We cannot stop preaching about what God wants to do for his people in the church. Oh, the bishop got up last Sunday and did a great job. He's out preaching uh, somewhere today. And, and I'm going to tell you, he did a fantastic job. He asked us some questions. What is the Holy Ghost? Who is it for? Is it still available today? Are we still required to have it? Can we still have it? A lot of questions he answered. Let me just tell you something. These are stones that cannot be done away with. These are landmarks that we cannot remove. He said remove not those ancient landmarks. They're going to be the thing that's going to guide you home. Woo! Yes, yes. We got talking about that prodigal son here today. I just might wind up preaching. We got talking about this prodigal son here today and how he wandered away from home. 
What do you think happened when he's turned around and started going back, Mason? He started recognizing things he'd passed on the way away, on his way out. Let's see. I've never been out here before, but I think I remember that place. And he would walk that direction until he'd see something else that he would, he would remember. And he would start following the landmarks. He didn't ever, he didn't ever intend to go back. He didn't leave a, a breadcrumb trail. He didn't leave markers. He didn't tie little pieces of string in a tree somewhere and say, when I get ready to go home, this is where. He never intended to go back. But let me tell you something. About the time you've made up your mind, I'm done with God, I'm done with this, I'm done with that, there'll be something, that quickening spirit down on the inside of you that's pulling you back. And God's saying, I'm going to light the path. I'm going to make a way where there seems to be no. Don't take those landmarks down. Don't remove Remove those things. They're going to help you get home. In fact, there's some backsliders in times past that are sitting on these pews right now. How many are so thankful for the breadcrumbs that God left that allowed you to find your way back to the house? Some of us, some of us never left the house per se. But our heart did. Guess what? God left breadcrumbs for us too. Sometimes our spirit gets ornery. I'm, I'm talking now more than just that day waking up and you're just mad at the world. You go a while and you just, you're just frustrated with something that God didn't do or something somebody else did. And we get all crossed up. Oh, y'all going to go quiet on me again. I see. Y'all don't live there. Okay, that's just me. But I got, I, got, I got book on you because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You may walk away from me, but I'm always going to be right there. I'm going to be knocking at the door of your heart. I'm going to drop little breadcrumbs here and there. I'm going to lead you back this direction. Don't take those monuments away. Don't remove those stones. Don't remove those memorials. He said, these are the things I'm going to remember. Number one, your word quickens me. Number two, I am thine. I am thine, he said. Save me, O Lord. I am thine. Number, th number, number three, that the wicked... Now, oh boy, here we go. The wicked have waited... For me to destroy me. And maybe you ain't never been in a situation where it felt like somebody just waited on you to, to wipe you out. They just, they just waited for an opportunity to pop you with a word or some crazy thing. Just hold on there. We'll get back there in just a minute. He said, but when that happens... The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. Now, there's a little bit of depth there. I want you to strap on your scuba, scuba gear and go a little deep with me here, all right? Because he said every one of us, days are short and full of trouble. Every one of us are going to have days where the wicked seem to have the upper hand. David himself said, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, my foot nigh under slipped. But here we are. What do I do now that the wicked is in wait with me or for me and they're lining up to wipe me out? He said, I'm going to let my mind be transferred from what they're doing and I'm going to go back and I'm going to read thy testimonies. I'm going to focus on thy testimonies. I'm going to hear again thy testimonies because the same God that brought me out of every other trouble I face is the same God that's going to bring me through this. And then number four, we talked about this briefly. I kind of mentioned it because I knew it was in here. See, I was already. Ahead. I have seen an end of all perfection. In other words, rough times have come. I've seen good days. And it seems like these days are not quite so good. I've seen the end of all perfection. But all of a sudden, my mind is reminded that thy commandment is exceeding broad. In other words, your goodness stretches beyond my bad days. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. 
Now, you ready for me to get to where I really want to go? That was my introduction. Here's my title. Thou shalt not forget to not remember. Thou shalt not forget to not remember. Double negative. I know. I get it. But that's scripture. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 25. Let's talk about this for just a minute. Because I'm going to talk to you about that wicked one. Not necessarily Satan. Maybe the one you painted Satan's face over. They're Satan. They, they wear me out all day long. Okay, that's all right. We'll get there. But I want you to catch this. He said, remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way, when you were come forth out of Egypt. And how he met thee, by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. Don't go any further yet. I want to go now to another set of verses. I want to talk about Amalek for a minute. I want to tell you about what Amalek did. Because it was the battle between Israel and Amalek in Rephidim that Moses said, Choose out men that are going to fight for us. And tomorrow, Joshua, no, Aaron and Hur are going with me to the top of the hill. And we're going to, they're going to fight down in the valley. Moses stepped over, stepped off a cliff here. I mean, I'm going to hold my arms up. And as long as my arms are held up, you're going to win. He didn't think about the battle going longer than he could hold his arms up. I'm going to plow a little bit. Said, okay, good, thank you. Here he goes. You ready? Let's go. He's got that rod. He's got that mean look on his face. Israel's fixing to take him out. And he's like, y'all need to hurry up. You need to wrap this up pretty quick. Woo. Boys have been tired. Where's Aaron and her? I've often wondered who her was. Anyway, where's Aaron and her? Somebody come help me. Somebody, somebody. Woo. Oh. And he, I wasn't, I wasn't serious, but just stay right there, Aaron and her. Now, you neither one of y'all her. I don't know what to tell you, but all right, just stay right there. All right, so, so he put his arms down because he's tired. And he watched the progress. Amalek. Let me just tell you something while we're just right here. Once you take your hands down and the hands of prayer, the hands of praise, or the hands of surrender, once you drop them, the enemy is always going to get the upper hand. The only way you're going to keep the upper hand is keep your praise intact, keep your prayer intact, and keep your surrender intact. Yeah. Moses says, Whoo, boys, this battle is longer than I expected. Man, I'm wore out. I'm tired. And he put his hands down. Israel advances, advances. Moses put his hands down. Amalek advances. And he's like, huh. That's it. That's pretty cool. So he's holding his arms up and he's tired. You know the story. Aaron and her. I don't know why they came. Maybe he anticipated. Maybe they anticipated. I really don't know. But all of a sudden Moses, he couldn't, he couldn't hold them up anymore. And he said, boys, I need you to help me. Let me tell you something. I don't need to go to church. Oh, there's my stupid voice again. I don't need to go to church because I, they're just a bunch of hypocrites. Let me tell you something about them hypocrites. Those hypocrites will hold your arms up when nothing else will. They may not be perfect, but they'll gather around you and fight with you. Sometimes they fight you. But so does your family, and you don't throw them away, so don't throw the church away. It's time to recognize that sometimes the church has people that aren't perfect. 
Let me, you know how I know? Because I are one. That's right. If you found the perfect church and joined it, you'd have just messed it up. Plus, it would then be a congregation of one. Because a perfect church is a church with no people. I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care if you can't take a bath because every time you get in the tub, the water parts. I'm telling you, if you are perfect, if you've got it all together, you start trying to live for God, you're going to discover there are days I can't hold my arms up and you need somebody to come along and hold your arms up. Amalek, that's the story we're talking about. He said, I want you to remember. If you would... Go back to verse, what was it, 17, 18, 16, 17, whatever I read. He said, remember what Amalek did unto thee. He said, I want you to get this in your mind. I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to help somebody here. I want you to put this in your mind for just a moment. Remember what Amalek did. He said, let me remind you. Go ahead. When you came out of Egypt, he met you in the way. He closed in behind you. He caught the weak ones, the slow ones, the little ones, the old ones, the sick ones, the ones that couldn't keep up. Oh, hear me. Mm. The ones that couldn't keep up. And the ones that were sick, weak, couldn't fight for themselves. The devil's always after those people. But let me tell you something. Those people also have influence. And if you don't think they're important, look at what God said. You're going to fight with them and you're going to take him out. And you're going to wipe him off the face of the earth forever. All right? Stay with me. Because those that he buffeted are worth something to me. So I don't know who you are, where you are, what's going on in your world, but you hear me when I tell you. If you are one of the ones that can't keep up, if you're one of the ones that seem like you're only half, half doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you're only half in, half right, half this, half that, if you feel like you're just too sick to try to be spiritual like everybody else, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter. God loves you just like you are. God cares about you just way, the way you are. And so that's why I told Dan, give Dan a break, because I wanted Dan to recognize it doesn't matter whether you're in the front or whether you're in the middle or whether you're in the back. If you're a part of the church, God cares about you. I'll go a step further. If you're not a part of the church, God cares about you. He didn't just die for the righteous. He died for everybody. Come in behind you and smoke those that were feeble. When you were tired and weary, and he thumbed his nose at the God of Israel. He said, here's what I want you to do. Go to verse 19 or whatever the next one is. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies. In other words, when you've come into the land that I promised you. In the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. Catch this. Thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek. You shall remember him no more. I want him wiped out of your memory from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. Thou shalt not forget to not remember. Now let me talk to you for just a minute about the wicked, he said. He said, when the wicked come at me, I'm going to make sure that my go-to is not talking about those that have done me wrong. Oh, y'all just, just lost your shout, didn't you? 
Did not, I didn't even get a good Baptist nod over that one. Nobody said amen. Thank you. <laughs> Ain't nothing like planning your own birthday party right there. It's like, you know, come on, come on, come on. Uh-huh. Here you go. What are we going to do? Everything come loose at once. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to pout. I'm going to suck my thumb. I'm going to blame everybody else. I'm going to get mad at everybody else because it wasn't just them that did me wrong. They probably was involved with it too. And t- in fact, I tell you what, I'm just not going back to church. I'm just not going to go, McDonald's get your order wrong too, but you still go back there. Anybody work at McDonald's? I'm sorry. How many times you going through that drive through and you're like, they're like, can I help you? You're like, yeah, I want a number one with no pickles or whatever. And they're like, <laughs> pull around. You're like, did they get that? And you get around there, and you got chicken nuggets instead of a Big Mac. And they put pickles on them. <laughs> Who puts pickles on a chicken nugget? I got a question. Where's the nugget even come from? I, the chicken don't have nuggets, so I don't know where that part. Anyway, here we got all this stuff. Everything's going wrong. Well, let's just blame everybody. He said, no, let me tell you what you need to do when wicked comes, when, when the troubles come. He said, you need to go back and you need to get into the testimonies of the Lord and how he has protected you and how he has brought you through. And you need to not remember or you need to not forget to remember. No, it's not you need to not forget to not remember the goodness and the blessings and the provisions that God has done. Because we get tied up with what's gone wrong or who's done us wrong. Pastor's back in the pulpit. Pastor's back to preaching. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I have to forget the good and I have to forget the bad because if I hold on to one or the other, then I'm going to be lifted up or I'm going to be so downtrodden that there's not going to be any chance for me ever to recover. I love the way Paul said it. He said, I don't count myself as one that is apprehended. He said, all I'm trying to do is just be apprehended by the things that I have been apprehended by. In other words, I'm not just trying to get God. I'm trying to get God to get me. I'm trying to not just understand him. I'm wanting him to understand me. I'm wanting a relationship. I want my mind to be changed into his image, not the other way around. If we're not careful, we'll try to build an idol by making God into our image. He said, no, let me elevate you to where I am. Come up a little higher, my people. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Forget those things which are behind and hang on to the testimonies of the, of the past of what I have done. Forget the Amaleks in your past. If you remember them, remember them only to remember the fact I wiped them out. And that's when he said, then forget them. It's like chewing a compliment, getting a compliment. It's like trying to live on bubble gum. Chew it long enough to get the flavor out of it, but you can't live on it. Spit it out. And guess what? The same people that throw compliments your way can also be some of the first people to turn on you. So don't put a lot of stock in what people say. What we need to put stock in is what the Lord says. And the Lord said, there's some stones here. I don't want you to forget. But there's some old battles. There's some old wounds. There's some old hurts that I want you to forget. Yeah, you'll still have a scar too, but I want you to get over them. I want you to move on. I want you to forget those things that are behind 
and press forward. Well, I remember back in 1529. Well, you are ancient of days. I remember back so-and-so did this to me. You know, I've learned this. It's sad, but I've learned this. Church hurt is real. But if you think you've been hurt by the church, try to be the pastor. Try to be the one that's trying to help everybody else. Because this one gets mad because you didn't help them. Or this one gets mad because you did help somebody else. And you can't win sometimes for losing. You know what? I'm glad to be in Savoy. Y'all ain't like that. Y'all are good people. And not to say other people ain't good people. But I will tell you this. That regardless of what your position is in the body, you're all going to have an opportunity to have a target painted on your back. And somebody is going to get the opportunity to throw an arrow or a dart. I don't remember what we're talking about now, but I looked at my wife and I said, well, I guess it's our turn. We'll suffer. We'll handle it. But you know what? We'll get through it because we're not giving up. The Lord has done too much for us. The Lord has been too good to us. Go read, go read my comments in the bulletin. He may not have given me everything I want, but he has definitely given me everything I need. I have no, nothing to charge him with. I will not speak against him. He has always done me good. I'd have wrote that song if, if uh, Dottie Rambo hadn't beat me to it. He ain't never. Is that a double negative? I guess it is. Too bad. That's southern talk. He ain't never done me nothing but good. Anybody remember that old song? Are you? I thought that was in my head. <laughs> he ain't never done me nothing. Done me nothing but good. Nothing but good. Oh, oh, oh. See, y'all thought y'all came up with that, oh, thing on that other song. No, nah, we was, oh, oh, and before y'all ever wrote the, oh. <laughs> ho, 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 he ain't never done me nothing, done me nothing but good. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Bubba. Here's the thing. What's your default song? Think about it. What's your default? What do you go back to when everything is quiet? When things are good or things are bad? What's your, what's your default? There's a tear in my beer because I'm crying for you, dear. You were on my lonely mind. Really? That's what you default to? That's ridiculous. There's no hope there. There's no strength there. I'd rather go back to, wait do you see, wait do you see, my brand new home. Wait do you see, it's beauty. Oh, you know what? I'm not worried about politics. I'm not worried about all the stuff that's going on. Our world's in trouble. Our culture's in trouble. Everything is going the wrong direction. They're worried about pronouns when they should be worried about their soul. They're worried about this and they're worried about that. Let me tell you something. God never called the church to fix society. He called the church to save souls. I'm not worried about it. You know why? Because eventually he's going to put it all right. We might have to suffer in the meantime, but he will eventually come and put it all right. That's why my eyes are on something else. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Where do you see? Where do you see? My brand new home. Just wait till you see its beauty rare. Ain't nothing down here can compare. I know some of y'all default to, here I am to worship. You know, whatever, that's fine. That's not where I was raised. I was raised in a different era. And I default back to what means something to my mind, to my soul, to my spirit. My heavenly Father's building me. That'd be the women. My heavenly father's building me. 
And then the man, I'm going to occupy my free. <laughs> Where do you see? What are you saying? I'm saying you have got to make sure that you do not forget to not remember the negative, the hurt, the pain, the trouble, the battles, the weakness, the mistakes, the inconsistencies, the moments when you were low. Because your God is saying, I've got something so much better. If you'll just get your eyes up a little bit. If you'll pick up your eyes and pick up your face just a little bit. Let your eyes be up here where I'm at. And get them off all the things going on around you. So here's what I want to do. How many has got stuff? Trouble. Issues. I read the other day that the word issue was not interpreted as a problem until the 80s. The word issue meant to come forth. Issue forth. But because of the progression of vocabulary and language, it became known as I have an issue. I need a tissue <laughs> for my issue. And my issue is you. Oh, whatever. That didn't cost you nothing. Here's what I want you to do. If you have an issue, I want you to bring that issue, that problem, that failure, that mistake, that argument with the spouse when you said too much. Now they got to also bring it from the other side and let it go that you said too much. It's got to be a it's got to be a united front, people. Remember, marriage is the only part of paradise God let us keep. I don't remember people fighting in paradise. I did say it was kind of odd though that, uh, or maybe maybe not odd, maybe it was just reality that God brought all the animals to, to Adam so that they could be named and then he put Adam to sleep and made Eve because I think we're going to call that a dog what? that don't look like a dog well, what does a dog look like? I don't know but that don't look like a dog they'd still be naming animals man And don't get me wrong, because men won't ask for directions. They're just going to do it their way. That's a calf. That's a, that's a sheep. That's a goat. Yeah. What's your issue? What is keeping you from having victory today? Then let's address it. Let's handle it. Then let's move on and forget it. Stop letting that thing live in your mind rent-free. Stop letting that thing live in your house and bring anything less than victory to your life. Sister Kylie, if you'd come. Church, if you'd stand. I'm going to open this altar. We're not going to run, shout, and dance. But we are going to walk up here today. We're going to lift our feet or foot. You might have a hard time lifting your feet at the same time. Lift our foot and put it under our foot so that when we walk out of here today, we will not struggle. That will be settled. Amalek, who's that? Amalek? I don't remember Amalek. That's because I got rid of him. He was not good to my people. He, he beat up my people. So I'm not going to let the accuser of the brethren survive. Your enemy is eventually going to be taken care of. 
Lift your hands and let's pray right now. Whatever it is that the Lord is fingering in your world, whatever it is that he's putting his finger on in your life right now and telling you, you will never survive. You need to recognize God is already at work on the other end of that, other end of that situation. Uh-huh. I feel, I, feel some, I feel some longing. If only I knew that were true. Well, how about all the scriptures I've given you? Come on. Come on. Why don't you step out and walk up here to this altar? We're going to take some authority over some things today. We're not going to let that back us in a corner anymore. There are people I know. Well, I don't want to be the first one. Why not? God is saying, if, if you'll just come on, I'll take care of it. If you'll step out up here, I'm going to take care of some of that emotional baggage you've been carrying around. I'm going to take out some of that guilt you've been carrying around. I'm going to get rid of some of that fear that you've been carrying around. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. You've been carrying around some stuff. Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to make up your mind. I will not forget to never remember it again. I will always remember. See, that's a, that's a double negative, which means I will always forget. I intend to forget. I intend to let it go. Come on, lift your hands and talk to the Lord right now. some private stuff so I'm not asking you to put it on the screen I'm not asking you to even speak it out loud except between you and the Lord here's what I want you to do you may be like me you can't hold that foot up as long as you used to I want you to raise one of your feet I don't care which one it is put it under the right one that's the that's a sign of authority you can't stand there and hold it up forever Hold that right foot up. Now, whatever that thing is that's tackling you, whatever that thing is that's badgering you, I want you to put it under that foot. And I want you to lift your hands and I want you to give God praise. Because whatever it is that you are taking authority over, the Lord said, I'm going to shut it down right here. It's not going to cross over Jordan with you. It's not going to cross over the sea with you. You're going to leave it behind. Now, put your foot down on its head and crush it in Jesus' name and let some victory come into your life right now. Come on. Come on, Sean. Jesus. 
come up here. Out of this congregation, there's more than what didn't, more than what come up here. So let me just tell you something. I hope even in the pew, you lifted your foot and put it down. He said, I'm going to make it to where authority is going to be restored. And you're going to crush the head of the serpent. You're going to crush the head of that thing that has been working you over. You have every right to practice that. In Jesus' name, take authority over that thing. But here's where the success comes in. We're not going to speak of it anymore. We're not going to talk about it anymore. We're not going to claim it's ours anymore. I don't still have that malady, that problem, that issue. God has set me free from that. Wait. Just wait. Let the doctor tell you. Just wait. Let life tell you. Let the marriage get better. Let the finances get better. Stop talking about what's that, what all's wrong. And start talking about what God is doing right. Come on, lift your hands and love him one more time. Jesus, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Yes, he is. So in this, in the rest of this service here, we're going to take up our offering. So ushers, if you would get ready. Then we are going to move right into our announcements. And we're going to save the change war to the end. Because the men are falling further and further behind. And I'm going to give you a chance to reach deeper and deeper in your wallet. Guys, the ladies have reached deep enough. Let's see if I can find these totals. You got them back there? Well, let's, let's hold off on that. I say we're going to wait. I guess we don't need to jump right in on that. Yeah, I know. In fact, you know what? I printed them in the bulletin. It's because I got tired of looking for them. I told you when you find it, get it together, you're going to forget where you put it. There it is. All right, so this Monday, tomorrow night, Brother Curtis will be teaching the Lifeline Study Group. It's a Bible study that he does here at the church at 7 p.m. Tuesday night is youth musician and praise team practice. And then youth service is... Uh, this coming Wednesday night. And Brother Colin will be preaching. That's pretty neat. Amen. So that's the first time I think. Is that the first time ever? Yeah. Okay. And then this Friday night, SOS. And then outreach. And then next Sunday, uh, the bishop will be preaching Sunday night. We have our Sunday night service, Sunday night live. And the bishop will be preaching. The rest is on a calendar in the bulletin. Please pick one up. And get all those details put together. And uh, we will worship the Lord now in our giving. Brother Joel, pray over the offering today. Amen. Ushers come, receive the offering. Worship with the praise team one more time as they sing today. God bless you.
Come on, let's do that. Let's praise his name. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. A couple of announcements. First of all, there's a staff meeting for all the staff that's in town. String on my glasses. Uh, at 3 p.m. today, the board meeting uh, that we had scheduled for this afternoon will be postponed. We'll reschedule that at a later date. But the staff meeting at 3 p.m., we will have that in the fellowship hall at 3 o'clock. And then my wife has an announcement. Everybody say garage sale. garage sale. All right, we've got that this week. So all of you, you've been cleaning out your closets, right? Getting all that stuff and got it all loaded in your car. We can start taking items after church today. So you can bring them to the fellowship hall. And then this week, we will have people here working on pricing and all of that in the evenings, mostly some may be during the day. So if you have things that you need to drop off, just give me a shout. And I can, if we're not already here, I can meet you here and get all of that to the fellowship hall. And that will be Friday and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So I'm also going to need workers. Um, I've, if you can see me about when you can work, we've got several different time slots for the two days. So I need lots of help there. And um, we need hangers. Anybody has like wire hangers, anything loose laying around hangers and good old Walmart sacks? We need those so we can bag people's stuff up. So if um, you can please make sure and bring me the uh, the Walmart sacks by Wednesday night um, and the hangers is maybe if you could bring some with your stuff um, so we can hang up some of the items. A lot of it will be folded, but um, we need lots of help for that. So. This is for the ladies department for anybody ever worked in the kitchen in the last while? Yeah, we we need some new appliances in our church kitchen. And so we are raising money for that. We, we desperately, our ovens are, yeah, really need to be replaced. So ovens, and then there will be some other appliances, fridges and refreezer, freezers as well. But our first focus is new ovens. So that's what these proceeds are going for. So thank you. All right. Everybody say yard sale. I, for, I do have some of these flyers. If any of you have um, want to take some and put them up at your work or anything, um, I, I've got a few of those if you'll see me after church. And we can print more. Everybody say yard sale. Yard sale. If you've ever tried to cook anything, biscuits or cookies or whatever in that oven, you can't get a... Uh, Y'all can sit down. Y'all can be seated. Um, I mean, everybody else was standing or sitting, so I just didn't want you to. Anyway, if you look, turn around and look, and everybody's looking at you like, uh, uh, uh. anyway. So if you try to put a cookie sheet in there, it won't go one way. And if you turn it around, the door won't close that direction. So it's just, uh, it's just time. All right. So that's probably going to take more than what this yard sale will produce, but that's a, that'll get us get the ladies a good start. Okay. The next thing that we need to do is, Brother Brennan, why don't you come up and talk about the change war, give the totals, and. Um, We'll see how we fare this week. The men are behind. Oh, you're doing it today? Come on up here. Both of you. All right. So total we have raised $1,072.30. Woo! Woo! The ladies are ahead with 634 and 66 cents. And the men, thank you for bringing in money, but you are losing. $437.64. All right, so if I could have all of y'all stand for just a minute, it shouldn't take very long. That way it's a little easier to get to your wallets and your purses and your pockets. And I know some of us ladies, we like to give exact change when we're buying stuff. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the youth group. Um, it will be all right. Just uh, what's that scripture right. about um, 
He'll, he'll lift a heavy burden. Well, we can start by giving him the heavy change that we've been holding on to. Hey, all right. <laughs> and give it to the Lord. He Who's will got bless the boxes? it and multiply it. And yes, hallelujah. Gavin, you don't have to bring the girls out. <laughs> nah. Actually, Mason, you can set the boys up. You leave that, that girls over there in the parking lot somewhere. All right. <laughs> The difference is $197.02. Come on, ladies. We've got this. <laughs> All right. Anything goes into that, we'll go in the other. Hi, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. You can bail off of there. You got precious cargo going on there. Okay. All right. So, play something. Uh, Monkey in the middle, pop goes the weasel, something. Put candy in there? Oh! <laughs> there ain't nothing like bribery, mankind. All right, come on, everybody. Let's give to these young people and help them out. They need to go to NAYC. Get, they need to get them prayed through. He went out and got all the change out of his truck. He had a handful. That's one of them heavy burdens the Lord's delivered him of. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. Brother Justin is going to pray the dismissal prayer. Lord, we love you today. We thank you, God, for all your many blessings to us, Lord. We ask that you would go with us as we go. Be with every home, every family. Keep us safe, and we thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Everybody also keep in mind next Sunday night after service, we'll be celebrating Pastor's birthday in the fellowship hall. So come ready to celebrate with him.